This is the kitchen pickleball bag. This was made by a guy named Grubb in Utah. I'm in Idaho. Uh, he came and visited me to, to show off the bag not long ago. And I had been following his journey on Instagram. He's very active there. And you know, all the videos I watched, I'm like, okay, this looks really cool, but you never really know until you see it in person, right? So when he came uh, to show it off with me, I was just like hoping, I was like, please, please be as good as it looks on, on your Instagram stuff. And it was, man. This thing is is so sweet. I uh, he left it with me. I took it on a trip to Vegas. I just got back, and the whole time, like I just fell in love with the bag more and more. Like everything is just so premium and quality. And I just felt like like it was made for me. Like as a pickleballer, all the features, all the pockets, like everything was just designed for pickleball. And uh, I know it took him a, it took a long time for him to design this, and he used a lot of people, a lot of feedback, and it shows in the product. And so while he was here uh, showing off the bag to me, we, we did an interview to get a closer look at the bag and hear his story around the development of it. But I'm really big on this. I think this thing's awesome. Uh, I have links in the description. Go check it out. But uh, here's, the, here's the interview I did with Grub. Hope you enjoy. Hey, everyone. Brayden here with Pickleball Effect. Really excited to have Grub Bushio with me uh, from Utah. I'm in Idaho. He's traveling in for the day. We've been hanging out. We play some pickleball, yeah. and we're uh, been checking out his new bag. So Grub messaged me. Uh, what was this? This was like three months, months, months ago. ago. Yeah. Tell me about your project. What you got going on? And that I've been following your journey the whole time. Super, super pumped about it. So your brand is called Kitchen, right? Yep. K T C H N. Yep. Kitchen. No I. No I. Kitchen. And you've been developing this pickleball specific bag. With, uh, with feedback from a lot of different people. And from the beginning, like from the prototypes you showed me, I've been very, very interested in your journey. And uh, it's really fun to see this thing come to fruition, see the bag, uh, the production model here, and uh, it's, it's awesome. So we've been messing with it today, and it is as cool as I was hoping it was gonna be. So I've been getting into bags recently more, and uh, there's, like there's there's good ones out there, but there's nothing that's like hit a home run. Yeah. This is the first bag where I'm like, yes, like I play pickleball. This was made for me. And uh, so what I was thinking is, let's look at some of the features of the bag, and then I want to hear your story, how you got to this point, because uh, just from our conversations earlier today, like it's been a, a really interesting journey, and you've uh, it'll be fun to dive into that. Yeah. But I I want to I want to show you guys this bag. So let's. I'll, I'll it. head it over to you. Kind yeah. of walk us through some of the features, because everything about this is is so intentional. Yeah, and uh, I like that. So I'll let you kind of take over and show us, walk us through this. Cool. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm hearing those words coming out of your mouth, because everybody I show it to, that's exactly what they say. They're like, "This feels very purposeful, and it feels like it's for pickleball." And I think that is the big gap that we were seeing, that I was seeing, that my partner was seeing, is just like these bags curling out there they're just kind of missing the mark in not just one area multiple areas like big large obvious gaps so um this bag was built from the ground up with feedback uh two days ago was our one year anniversary of our facebook group where we've been building the bag dude that's crazy that's a um, long time yeah it is a long time <laughs> and so i'm really really proud of where it's at now this is this is the production model so they're going to start production and this here. just came in uh like, like a a week ago. A week ago. Yeah. And you're planning New. to start, uh, so people can do pre-orders now, yes. but you're, you're planning to, to go live with it in March? Uh, inventory should arrive late April. Late April, okay. Yeah. So they'll start production. In yeah, the so timeline-wise, time that's what we're looking at. You can do pre-orders. We'll put links and all that stuff in the description if you want to check it out. Yeah. But yeah, keep going. Okay. So um, starting out, I'll start with here, here with the shoe cube. Me and Braden were just talking about, he's done some polls and he said, you know, how many people use the shoe cube or like a shoe feature? And it was about 50, 50. Yeah, it was like, so he said. Was like almost exactly 50, 50. Yeah, so that's exactly, like, like yes. 300 people took the poll. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a pretty good amount of, of people. So we saw the same feedback. And so we're like, okay, we could build a shoe compartment in the bag. It's gonna make it a lot larger in some capacity, but there's enough people saying they don't want it. So it's just like, okay, let's, Let's make it attachable. Let's make it on and off. So this is the shoe cube here. Um, this fits up to a size 14. It's actually um, 14 inches long. So if you want to measure your foot out, maybe get a little bit bigger of a shoe. But we got some ventilation here on the top, which is really nice. My shoes are in here right now. So I see a lot of people 
This is just a guess, but I think a lot of people are gonna use them for shoes or just extra storage. Yeah. The nice thing about this size is it's designed to go on the inside of the bag or the outside. So in theory, you could have two of these things. You could have one for the inside with just like more stuff, maybe gotcha. your clothes in one, and then you can attach this one uh, to the outside of the bag. So we it have- It also has like the grab handle, right? Like, yep, little grab handle. So you don't even you know, have to attach it. You can just carry that Yeah, you can totally just carry it in. So I'm really curious to know like how people use it. So it's Purposely designed to however you want to use it. Either way, yeah. Right. So, and then it just attaches to the back here. There's some little um, Molly Web loops. These are made out of uh, Hypalon Molly material. Web? Yeah, it's kind word. of a, a Molly Web system. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> of like what they called? use in the That's in the, the bag. Yeah, so like this is a Molly Web. This is like a Molly Web. Okay. So okay. yeah, kind of a backpack term. Um, so it just attaches here. You can snug it down really tight, so it's not like flopping around. So when it's on here, and you wore it or you wore it earlier. Um, when it's really snug, you can't even really feel there's an accessory no. on the back. Yeah. So it's weighted really well. And um, I didn't run with it, but I don't think too many people are running with yeah, this Yeah, unless you're like late for your <laughs> tournament or something, right? Yeah, you're running to your, yeah, yeah. your court. But it'll stay on either way. So that's the shoe cube. But like, um, but like my thoughts on the shoe cube as we were messing with this is like so many bags have that like under the, you know, in the bottom, mm -hmm. the side. Mm -hmm. And when you don't use it, it's annoying. It takes up space. And yep. when you do use it, it like eats up so much compartment of the, or so much of the main compartment, right? And like a lot, it's uh, it almost like your whole bag becomes a shoe mm -hmm. bag, and mm -hmm. so that's just a, a major issue I've kind of run across with a lot of the bags I've used before. So like I love that you can attach this on the outside, yeah, and keep all the space on the inside for what it was designed for. Exactly. Uh, so I'm I'm a huge fan of what you decided to do here. Um, it, like it's very versatile, right? Like a it lot, is. I, I love that you can attach it on the outside, keep the main space. People who don't use it don't have to right uh, but yeah it's cool that way it doesn't like you said it doesn't have to use shoes like, yeah and it's a nice space. bag too like you could honestly like use this as a travel bag if you wanted yeah. to just carry it with you on a there trip you like <laughs> it's a nice bag you know like yeah. it's a really really nice bag so yeah super um that's like one of my favorite features is just like the versatility yeah. of having more space when, I, when you, you first it. sent me the images that was like the first thing i noticed i was like yes yeah thank you you obviously talked to pickleballers when you were <laughs> yeah. designing this a lot of pickleballers yeah so um okay and then over, i'm just gonna put this yeah, I'll hold it. down or you can hold it um here on the front of the court caddy um let's just talk about materials real quick like yeah. why we picked some of these materials so this whole bag is pretty much wrapped in, it's called PU, polyurethane. Yep. A lot of people say PU leather. Um, it's just a really nice, it's like buttery soft. It yeah, looks it great. Good. It cleans it's off too. super nice. Yeah, it's super, super like scratch resistant. Um, it's just a really high quality material that should last a lifetime. And like, that was one of the objectives with these bags is just like, I want to build something that's going to last forever. I, I personally love like, really purposefully built, you know, performance type gear, right? Yeah. From like outdoor companies, like you buy a really nice coat once, it's like $600, but like you're gonna have that coat for ages because it's just so good, so bi uh, well-built materials are there, so. Yeah, that's another thing like I've noticed with a lot of bags is there's only a couple that come to mind that I feel like are made with really quality material. Yeah. A lot of it is is pretty cheap. Yeah. Like I just wanna, get this out the door, yep. not a lot of thought put into it. And uh, so yeah. yeah, I mean. That's that's a huge give and take thing. with this with this bag specifically is people use those materials because they're cheap. They're trying to hit a target price point, right? Like our our bag is very expensive. Like <laughs> it it's probably eight or nine times more just to make on average uh -huh. than pretty much every other pickleball bag and out it, there. And it feels that, like that was another impression yeah. I got. Like we'll, we'll dive into this more as, as we get into the inside, but mm -hmm. like everything about it feels very premium. Yeah. Like it does have a premium price. Like we'll, we'll talk about the price here in a bit, but mm -hmm. it like, it, it's what you expect, yeah. right? Like I'm it, paying it this, is. this is what I want. Yep. And like it, it comes through that way. And yep. it does it does look and feel nice. Yeah. So right ultra premium materials all around. I could talk about some of the other materials. <laughs> we have like YKK zippers. Um, these will be actually coated on the production model, um, so meaning they'll just, they're yep. more water yeah, resistant. They didn't; they were just in a time crunch to get this one done, so they just did these ones. But that'll be. Is there coated. another one that's coated? Yeah, there is, is another example? one that's coated on the back right okay, here. Okay, so right there. So it'll actually finish off the look as well, which I'm really excited yeah, about. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Um, super slick looking, and then it, it actually has just nice function as well. So YKK zippers, 
um, Hypalon pull tabs. You can YKK zippers. You 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 say that like like you're really proud of that. Yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. I don't because know, I don't, they're I don't like know my the best zippers. Are they? Yeah. And in <laughs> okay. like, dude, when zippers break, it ruins an entire bag, an so entire is, jacket. So is YKK? Like, is it everything? Yeah. Yeah. So they like... make the zippers um, like everything about on this zipper is so they're, they're YKK. The, they're the Cadillac of zippers. They are. They're just kind of the you know, most renowned high quality zippers okay. because no one likes crappy zippers. And when they break, your whole bag is done pretty yep. much, right? So it's like, we cannot have these breaking. We just have to use the best. Um, so yeah, awesome materials all around. Um, obviously, let's talk about some of the features yeah. here now. So everybody loves all of these magnetic features. So this ball pocket, or sorry, this bottle pocket that fits really large bottles. So this is a large hydro flask mm -hmm. right here. Um, goes in with ease on kind of stretchy here yep stretchy right here so it, it is kind of adaptable nice. this is a i think almost a four inch uh, four inch wide bottle um so you could do like probably up to four and a half inches yeah. i would say and it this is on both sides would stretch it yep it's on both sides so it's magnetic so it's really flush Something about the seat. magnetic is just so satisfying it is <laughs> yeah it really is so it's like just and it works well like it serves a purpose it keeps it flat like if you i see a lot i I'm envisioning a lot of people using this as just another pocket uh -huh. as well. So the fact that it just like can close up nicely and your stuff isn't yeah, going to be good. falling out. Um, so the, bo uh, the bottle pockets are really nice. And then obviously like this is everybody's favorite feature. Yeah, everyone, everyone freaks out about that. Pocket. We were at the courts today and yeah. it's just... Uh, it's really cool. It's nice. The magnet pieces are awesome. And then the ball. So we actually um, improved this system here. So we actually could fit another ball. But balls are just like crazy easy. Yeah, so this sleeve goes all the way down. All Before, the way down. This was like a little lower, but you raised it. Mm -hmm. We raised it because it was like it was. It, was kind of it wasn't doing through. that. Like you have to kind of fumble for mm -hmm. the material to open it up. But now it's just like you can't miss it, yeah. which is really nice. So and like that's just one example of like the many little nuances that you guys found and fixed on this bag. Yeah, I'm sure you'll bring up more, but like yeah. Every, I feel like everything was thought of, and like yeah. that's just another one. Yeah, and like honestly, we wouldn't have caught that unless we were actually using it right. in like real world testing. So um, when the first samples came in, it was just like, we need to test this. I'm, I was using it every single day. This bag literally came everywhere with me. I use it as my <laughs> daily bag. Like I just wanted to figure out like what was, what could, what could be a negative about the bag? Yeah. Um, and also just the longevity of it. Like, is this gonna be nice to use? all the time is it okay to use just every once in a while so like yeah. everything you touch on the bag function wise like it just needs to work well every time and needs to feel good mm -hmm. so um yeah so uh bottle pockets ball pocket and ball pockets are on both sides yep both sides so, so you, you can fit, you can fit eight, up to eight balls eight balls if anyone here Easy. is like me like you have to carry at least two brands of balls these yeah, days. Yeah, seriously. So you got you got your Franklin pocket, yep. and then you got your Dura pocket. Yeah, I whatever. got Franklin and Dura in here right now. We played with them so earlier. That uh, that works. Yeah. So, and then here on the back, um, I love this back panel design. It allows for a ton of ventilation. Like these uh, these little valleys are pretty deep actually, so it's gonna allow for some nice ventilation. Yeah. Um, this material on the back is called Spandura and it's like what a lot of um, like I'm wearing like Lululemons look like you're wearing like built like it's like a really popular athletic wear yeah. material because it's breathable it's it's um, really just durable and it's just a great material so that's lined with this we have our name tag slot so they're going to come with this card actually it's just a little name name card that can slide in and out you okay, can put so like your business card in there or yeah. I don't know, whatever. whatever whatever you want. Or you don't have to put anything. The logo will just be on the back. It looks super clean. Um, we have the fence hang hooks up here. This is different than anything I've seen. Yeah. So usually the hooks are going to be up here yeah. in the middle. And I hate it when the hooks are in the middle because it just stretches the bag out. Yes. I don't mind them when they're so much on the side, but mm -hmm. you put them here. Yeah, so there's a reason for that, actually. So we tested out bags originally that had the hooks up here. Mm -hmm. And putting, like, putting the bag on the fence when it's right here you're basically i made a video of this recently you basically have to like heave the whole bag up and on but when like so backpack weights always gonna be coming this way right yeah. so i was like okay well if we put it here on the um on the shoulder straps the weight of the bag you're basically counter balancing it like this yeah and see kinda, how it's already going down yeah it kind of it's so easy, easy to just throw to up and, and down yep so it's just, it just works better. Did you see better. that somewhere else? Like I've never seen that before. Um, no, 
You just I, I haven't seen it on any other pickleball bag, this, but this like a, this is a Greb original. Right? Yeah, yeah. This was yeah. This was our <laughs> our team's original design, and it just makes sense too because we wanted a place where they could also just hide yeah. and like live super slick like you don't have to use yeah because the other to. ones were just flopping around i'm just like that's not yeah it's annoying it's really slick it's yeah, annoying because like yeah when you have them up here they're they're long they're, they're like long two inches, yeah they're, they're really they're long annoying. yep and i like how slick yep. that is and they, they hide and it's easy to use yeah they hide and, and if you don't use these this is another thing you pointed out to me that i love is like the material here at the bottom mm -hmm. is extremely sturdy it's thick yep. if you set this on the court or the cement which is what i end up doing more often than hanging it yeah and there's also not fences everywhere. Yeah, like it's just it's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah I love this bottom material. Like this feels like a. It's cool. It feels like a truck bed liner. That's yeah, like the exactly closest thing I could explain to people. Like that's what it feels like. Um, this is a TPU textured nylon, so they actually use this in like watercraft a lot of the time. So it's it's totally okay. water resistant, yeah, yeah. but it's just like super textured, super durable. Um, yeah, you're gonna be you know court surfaces are sandpaper. Yeah, like, they have to withstand and and it stands up long well time. on its own yeah that was a huge thing for me because i hated going to pickleball courts and seeing bag just like slumped over and yep. like there's just gonna be weird wear and tear like inevitably yeah, it's gonna like so and yeah stuff. and so i wanted this to like present itself nicely and like we'll open it up right now but um yeah i just wanted to you know, have itself present yeah. nicely and like not tip over. Like and, I don't want to scuff up the side of my bag. We dump, jump into this. Like it has these simple, easy access yep. pockets. Yep. Like on both sides. Like this is lined really yep. well for your phone key. Like yep, phone keys. This you top don't have one. to open your bag for the the quick yep. stuff. Yeah. And know? I use these pockets a ton. These yeah. top one. I, I, I love them. I love on them. every bag I have, if I don't have a couple of those, yep. it's so annoying. Yeah. So I yeah I seriously use these pockets like and then, the most. I, I'm, then you got you, oh, you yeah. got you got more here. Dude. Yeah, I know. So there's a good thing I'm there's here. so much to it's talk a good about. Thing I'm here. It is. So <laughs> these are some security pockets, like for an air tag, or maybe you have like a credit card. I don't know, just yeah, like something whatever. you don't something want somebody to quickly grab, or like right. they see this pocket. Some you know, right? Because normally, like I'm gonna set this down like against the fence. Yeah, like the fence is right here, yep. right? And so mm -hmm. totally hidden, super it's just pretty slick, just nice pockets. Yeah, right. we can go to the inside now. Cool. Let's go to the inside. All right. So up top is our uh, magnetic custom iron Yeah, this case. little like hook here is so slick. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, this system works so well. And a lot of people are like, well, is it gonna fall off in the bag? Like, it only goes one, yeah, one it goes, way. It only goes out, so like, I can't. It's not gonna fall in It's not going that way. You literally have to like intentionally And And the bag out. comes with this Yep, this comes case. with this. And it has a carabiner on the outside as well. So if you wanted to have like tons of stuff in here and you're like maxing out the bag, then you could take that out. We just wanted an option so you can loop it, it on your, you know, yeah, you got little loopies system. here on both sides. Right? Yep, little towel loops so you can hook it on here or I don't know, wherever else you want. Yeah. It's kind of up to you, you know. I didn't but it, see that before. That's slick. Yeah, so it just has a place to live. Like everything has um, has a home essentially in this bag, yeah. right? So yeah, we got that up top. This is like fleece lined on the inside. It fits large visors, like we made it universal sizing. So everything should fit in there. Everyone and then, should be wearing safety glasses these days. Yeah. Put it in there. Seriously, yeah, just, yeah, put it in there, it'll fit. And then we have our uh, waterproof pocket up top. Um, so this is fully sealed. So you can put your chapsticks in there, eye drops, sunscreen in the so summer. Like it's, if it did break or if something. If it did break, you don't want to just, exploding all yeah. over your you know expensive paddles and whatnot so that's that was a really nice feature i love that feature um, yeah I didn't realize you don't that have to use it cool. for just waterproof stuff obviously it's a great pocket and then below that is our large stretchy mesh pocket and man this thing stretch it's the same material as ball so like you can really put a ton of oh, stuff yeah. in there and uh it doesn't yeah. quite go all the way to the bottom so stuff doesn't disappear which yeah is nice. exactly exactly so th there are plenty of pocket like you know, you have in plenty of stuff for your grips, for your tapes, yeah, whatever. whatever. Like it's it's plenty of space um, for these pockets. And then here on the inside, obviously we have our uh, paddle sleeves. And I know you you made a comment. What were you t what were you talking about earlier about these? Well, I was just saying that like I've seen paddle sleeves like this mm. in other bags. Yeah. And when I saw it on here, I was like, uh, I'm not sure because I I've always liked having that like extra compartment on the back. Yeah. For for uh, for paddles, mm -hmm. but these are really sturdy, strong. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like with four paddles in here, but mm -hmm. they do actually fit well, and like they're going to protect your paddle well. And so I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. Like I, that was one of the things where I was like, I want to look at that. Like, is that mm -hmm. going to feel good? 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you can easily fit four paddles. And yeah. when, when you're putting the paddles in, like you kind of have to squish them to the side so you can fit this in. Yeah, that's kind of the, the design is which, this needs which to works. live kind of in the middle. Yep. So if you if the paddle's like here, it'll kind of bump into it, right. but you just it's, move it over it's not a huge deal. Yeah. But yeah, th these are these are good. And obviously you don't have to use them all. Yep. Exactly. Um, but you can easily fit four paddles in there, yeah. which surprisingly, a lot of people have four paddles yeah. these days. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people. A lot of people have more too. <laughs> So yeah, the uh, there's there's full coverage as well. Like our last model, this was a little bit short, so this was kind of poking up. So I was like, no, they need to be fully protected. Like these are your babies, you know. Like yeah. we want to make sure they're fully protected. So it does work really well. Um, you know, it it just yeah. Once I mean, again, they have a place like, to live. Like they're yeah, sturdy, super they're stiff. strong. They're not gonna like collapse on you. Yep, they're they've got some nice padding in there, so you know your paddle should not be rubbing yeah. or getting banged up. So right. that's that's the objective. And then here on the back side, little laptop uh, compartment. Mine's in here right now. So plenty of space for there. You could also put a, another paddle there. Um, I've had people ask me, how many, how many paddles can you put in this thing? <laughs> like realistically, you could probably put, uh, you know, one back here and maybe two more up front. You'd, you'd want like a paddle. Right. Um, I mean, I, I do feel like this isn't necessarily, it's not meant to hold 10 paddles. No, right? it's not like, a tournament it's bag. Not. I mean, yeah. you, you could certainly use it for. I'm not taking six paddles to a tournament. No, no. And so, like, I think this can be. This, yeah. This can be a tournament bag. Yeah. But like, it's a. Uh, that's just a small. That's uh, such a small yeah. market, and, and there are it bigger is. bags out there. But mm -hmm. I think this is big enough to fit everything, and mm -hmm. I, and I love that there's a home for everything. So like you mentioned this, and when, like when so many bags I've played, like the the Selkirk ones, yeah, Yola's, like they're just like this big compartment. It's just this like big black hole yes. where everything ends up falling in. Yep. And here you have so many little compartments there, like everything has a home. Yeah. And there's actually not a ton of, like there's space here, right? Yeah. You can put a, you can put a massage gun, you can put a chain, like there's a little space here, yeah. but it's not reference. like this huge black hole. It's like this yep. extra space if you have things that don't, yep. you know, necessarily fit in some of the smaller accessories. And yeah, so that's right. it's just, everything has a home, everything's designed, everything's fit. And it's not this big, huge black box Yes. And, uh, and I love that. Yeah. And like that was one of the very early on feedback things is people were like, I like this bag, but these these compartments are so unnecessarily large that, yeah, they just become a black hole. Yeah. You know, it's like your paddle. And like if things don't have a place to live, you need paddle covers to go in your bag. Right. It's like, well, why? Like that's I, what a bag is supposed see, to do. You know, like, you know, I don't know. It's just funny. Like they're well, just too big. Right. They and really even are. Even like the accessory pockets, like you'll see an accessory pocket, like you have like two separate here. Mm -hmm. You'll see like one accessory one that big goes one. all the way to the bottom. Right. And it's like, right. I'm not going to have a thousand overgrips that build up to the top, right? right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Nobody's what am I supposed, to do, doing what that? supposed to do with this huge thing? Yep. So like, I love that they're separate. Yep. And uh, and everything, even inside here, you mentioned, it's like everything feels premium. Yeah, it Everything is. Is, is so nice. Yep. Uh, and I like that you have like the gray inside. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, everything's visible, easy yep. to see. Very visible. Um, but yeah, dude. This, so let's talk price for a second. Okay. So it's it's available for, for pre-sale right now. Yeah, for pre-sale. So you can, you can get a... Pre-order. Or pre-order, I guess. Um, you're doing like a pre-order deal. Yeah. So what's what's the deal right now? How much is this going to retail for? Yeah, so it'll retail for right at 300 And that comes with the shoe cube, the eyewear case, and then the backpack, okay. obviously. So for that will be retail price. Um, but it's 250 right now right for pre-order. And how long is that going to last? Um, it'll last close to launch. I think we'll start cutting off pre-orders probably maybe a week or two yeah. before we actually launch. So yeah, it's, it's a good opportunity to, to jump on that if you want to. Uh, again, links in the description. I'll have a, a code in there for, for free shipping that you can add. Yep. But I, I know that there's gonna be people that are gonna look at it and think, oh, okay, 300, that's too much. Like, what's your response to that? I mean, I mean, just being real, this is an expensive bag to make. Yeah. I know people might think like we have crazy margins going on and like, I mean, I've had people be like, oh, it's just a money grab. Um, it's not a money grab. This is, uh, like I said, eight to, eight to nine times more expensive than other bags cost to make. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll just tell you it is over a hundred dollars just to make, just it. to make one bag. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's meant to last a lifetime, right? It is. And like, it, like you get what you pay for, like you really do with a bag like this. And I'm, I'm not just saying that, like you go to other backpack companies, other very premium brands are using the same type of materials. Like, and honestly, what a, the cost of 
bags like this, like this is built from the ground up. I'm not using a pre-existing manufacturer mold and like slapping a label on it. Like the design costs, like there's so much more going into, you know, not just the cost of what it costs to make and get but, like, here. You work on this for a year. We've been working on this for a year. We, we hired an, you know, one of the best uh, bag designers. He's built some of the best travel bags in the world. Um, so there's just costs, there's you know, it, yeah. like there's a lot of, there's stuff, a behind lot of stuff behind it that people aren't like, it's not just like a, a mold. I can't just like, yeah, like stamp these things out, you know, this, like yeah, there's this, a lot that goes into a bag. We'll, we'll dive into that here in a bit, kind of talk about your story and the design of this. But it's so funny that like when you, if you go on like Amazon and you type in pickleball bags, you're mm. just going to see the same bag. Over and over. It's the same bag with a different logo. With a different on logo it. on yeah, it, and yeah. you're not going to find this anywhere else. You literally designed it, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's unique that way, which is cool. And and that that took time, process. You you got a lot of input, and so mm -hmm. I I hope people will appreciate what went into this. Yeah, and, and and honestly, this bag is not for everyone. I'm not trying to make a pickleball bag for everyone. This bag is made for your serious player that enjoys quality, that wants to buy the best. To last a very long yeah. time. It's kind of like I've heard people say this. I've never heard this before. But like buy once, cry once type sure. of product, you know. And um, I've never heard that term before. But yeah, it's kind of that mentality of like, yeah, it is expensive, but also it's expensive. Like compared to what the existing bags out there? Yeah, yeah it's way expensive. <laughs> but like other bags in just the real world, like travel bags, gear bags, like it's, it's, those bags will go up. This falls in line. It's very in line to the quality I'm, and function of yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, like I've shot for luggage before. I've mm. never um, shot for many bags outside of, of pickleball bags. Yeah. And yeah, they it gets up there. It gets up it's there. It's not uncommon. <laughs> no, it's not uncommon. So for what it is and like the looks, so, you know, it, it just is what it is. Yeah. I w hope one day we can get the price down. Uh, that would be great. That would mean we can sell to more people but like i mentioned it's you know we're not trying to build a bag for everyone it's yeah. for a very specific player that likes a certain style and has a certain amount of gear and likes nice yeah. stuff you know yeah i i'm certainly a fan of it i was uh very excited for you to come out check it out and uh, I, i'm sold on it like i really think this thing is awesome thank you uh i'm very excited i I, I don't get to, to to get one yet, unfortunately. Yeah, the way you're just coming soon. Coming, but I, I'm gonna, actually no. You're, well, you're using it this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hang so, on to it for a week yeah. and, and 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 mess with it some more. But uh, but yeah, dude, I I, I'm, I really think you did a great job with it. Very Thanks. excited about it. And I think there's gonna be a lot of people who appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, but let's Hope so. let's dive into the story behind the bag because there's a lot that went into this. Mm -hmm. uh, you said it, it took a year. So when, when we were we were chatting earlier today, you know. You, you're you're kind of this like serial entrepreneur yeah. dude. Like you've done many business. You've actually done a bag company before. Yeah. And which uh I imagine helped a lot in the design of this because definitely the the average dude or woman, whoever wants to go make a company, it's uh it takes if you're gonna do it the right way, it takes a lot of time and investment. And a lot of people don't have that or are willing to. And you and you did. You put in a lot of money, you did the R and D. Yeah. And, uh, to build this and, and it took you a year <laughs> like it's crazy that it took that long to yeah to produce but that's what it takes and yeah. so give us the give us the story of building up to this like what were you doing before where the inspiration to come you know to do this you know let, let's start that yeah so i won't go like too crazy far back but yeah i'm definitely a serial entrepreneur like building products so my last bag company uh, was a company called canine sports sack and it was it ended up being the world's best-selling dog carrier backpack so <laughs> Go look it up. It's uh, you've probably seen it on like social media and stuff, but like you literally throw your dog on your back, go ride your bike, go on the subway. You know, we've seen people do some crazy stuff with their dogs on their back, snowboarding, skiing. Like, anyway, so that was the product, um, and yeah, a lot of um, you know, we made a lot of mistakes and and learned from that. Um, luckily, it ended up being a, an awesome success. But yeah, I learned a lot to go into this bag and know how to work with design and manufacturers and like how things stitch together and like just wanting to do this really, really right from mm -hmm. the get-go as much as possible. So yeah, that that background of that company and doing that um, was a huge uh, step. Are you still stone. involved with that company? No, I sold my half uh, okay. to my partner. He still runs it. And did, did you go from that to start designing this? Or? No, so in between that, um, 
I've started up other projects. Um, we've actually had a paddle company. I'm a third owner in a, another small paddle company called Golden Pickleball. Yeah. Um, that's just been a very side project. I'm actually pretty bummed. Like we missed, like we were talking about this earlier. I think we missed a huge opportunity. Yeah, you guys started that so um, early. Like what year did you make your 2018. first paddles? So End of 2018. This was in Provo, Utah when yeah. you guys started it. Yep. So at that time I was living in Utah yeah. and I was like just getting into pickleball and my more like serious friends uh, at the time, they all had golden paddles. Yeah, yeah. So I got into pickleball. It was right after I sold K9 Sports Act. Um, I had two two of my buddies that started playing pickleball who got introduced to it from their parents, just playing in their you know their uh, driveway. I yeah, guess seems 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 to be how yeah, things start. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we started playing. I had a tennis background. I played tennis all growing up, and so I was like, cool, like. Sounds like a sport I don't need somebody else pretty good to hit with, you know? So, like, I was drawn into it in that aspect. Like, I remember the first time playing pickleball. We had really great games. We all picked it up quick. And I was like, man, this is really fun. Like, I don't know if this is a fad because it was in Utah. And Utah typically doesn't have a lot of influence. So I was like, uh, you know, like, business-wise, like, I think we could make some cool design paddles. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I could be wrong, but we might have been the first paddle company making like cool looking paddles Maybe. that was our that was our I'm like sure. our whole mo was just like beautiful yeah I, I remember the the like sunsetty kind of look yeah. like leather uh -huh. grip yep yeah so we we did that with uh with two of my friends it still exists today uh but like i mentioned it's i've had other businesses i've i've been doing other things it's been very but that was your introduction side to pickleball. yeah that was my introduction to pickleball like get my feet wet like i I liked what I was seeing, yeah. like how, how people enjoyed the sport so much. So it's, it's, like I said, I think it was a huge opportunity we missed, but it's kept me in the pickleball scene enough to basically, to realize if, if I didn't have that, <laughs> there's no way that this would be around. Yeah. So as, you know, as, as sad as I am, like missing that opportunity, it's led to this opportunity, which I think is great. And I'm like, really, it, it's like checking off all the boxes for me personally and, and for my partners. There's like, cool, we know backpacks well, it's kind of untapped, like yeah. we think we can do it really well. Um, so yeah, in between from selling my company to now, tons of different projects. Um, my background is like e-commerce, marketing mm -hmm. and, and advertising. So I'm always typically like selling something online or helping other people like get going in the startup world. Um, so yeah, a lot of, of e-commerce success, but this is, we actually shut down um, our main business, which was a marketing and kind of ad agency. We're making, helping make ads mm -hmm. uh, for e-commerce brands. And that was doing pretty well. Like uh, that's a good business. And we ended up just shutting it down to pursue this full time because we know, I, I know the opportunity there is with, with bags and like within pickleball yeah. that it was just kind of one of those things like right time, right products, right skill set, just kind of yeah. checking off those boxes to be 100%. like, we got to go all in, all in. So shut everything else down that, you know, people might say that's crazy because that did really well, but this is like, I just really believe in this, like really believe in that's this. That's awesome, man. I, uh, I think you're going to make it happen. This, yeah. this has been so fun. The, uh, you've been just posting all the time mm -hmm. on, on Instagram about different features yeah. and that. There, there's not another bag where you can make so much content around it because there's just not so much nuance <laughs> yeah, around them. And like, yeah, you, you create like a video every day about some different feature, why you mm -hmm. did it this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's picking up. People are noticing. Mm -hmm. It's People see the quality. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not hard to see, you know, the effort that went into it. So I want to dive into like, you know, what, okay, you have the bag history. Yep. You, uh, so I guess that's up until like this time last year. This time last year. Yeah. So you, you have the idea, you want to start going after this. Like what, what, what does it take? Like do you have to, you obviously have a relationship with the manufacturer and like you just kind of start the process, start iterating, start yeah. testing stuff. Did you like, okay, this is the shell I want. Let's change this. Yep. Like, I don't really know how that works. Yeah. So step one was basically like, okay, let's decide to do it. And step two was we need to build a new community. I already had an existing Facebook group in for pickleball. It's called pickleball friends. I've had it forever. It was kind of used for, you know, just golden pickleball and whatnot but i started there and i was like hey everyone who's interested in helping us build the next ultimate pickleball bag join this group so i got that's kind of where we initially started with building the group of who we were going to build it with and then uh the step after that was like okay we have to uh, i have some notes in my phone but i wrote down initially like 
all the little features, everything that it needed this, this to is, hold. This is your napkin story. Yeah, literally. Yeah, it's, it's on my phone. Yeah. And I, I typed it out and basically there's like, I don't know, it's like, uh, I'll have to put it in a screenshot or something. Okay. But anyways, um, so that's, that was step one. It's like, what do people bring? What do I bring to the court? Uh, what do I think would be cool? Um, where can I like pull some inspo? For, so it's just kind of like initial research, right? Mm -hmm. Like pickleball players would like this list of things. Great. Now from here, we uh, contacted the designer. His name's Michael. He's built some of the world's best-selling uh, travel bags. Okay. And I was like, him. I want to work with him. So you had a relationship with him before, or did you reach um, out to him? No, actually, it was a it was just kind of a mutual relationship through a friend that got me connected with them because they were working with another company, but now he did his own thing. So it was kind of this roundabout way to to kind of get to him. But I just wanted the best person I could possibly find because I knew this was going to be super like technical and, I'm and sure built from cheap. the ground up. Yeah. He's not cheap. Yeah, I got a bill from him this week. I'm like, ah, man, but it'll pay off. So, um, but yeah, so working with him was incredible. Like I, that's one thing I learned from a mistake I had with my last company is we, we were kind of doing a lot of it directly with the manufacturer and not necessar necessarily with the designer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, we have to do someone who just knows bags in and out. They know how to stitch, they know how to sketch it up, they know how to pass it on to the manufacturer. Yeah, that's a skill. To build it right. It and is any, a skill. Any sort of third party, whether it's manufacturing, you know, marketing, yeah. whatever, like that communication element is oh, big. Yeah, huge. And uh, the nice thing with him too is he already had relationships with some of the top manufacturers. Okay. So getting to the manufacturer we're using now, I don't know if I would have been able to do it. Yeah. Like legitimately. Yeah, if, if I didn't go through him and like have that relationship, like we're not ordering a ton of bags right now. It's, we're a very small fish for them. Yeah, so I imagine it was hard to convince him, but I, I, I literally had to, sell, I literally had to tell idea. him, I had to tell him how many bags I sold for my last company. I was like, we're doing a lot. Like, like look, I've done this I, look, before. I know how to market and do that thing. Like, <laughs> please, please work with me. Trust me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I kind of had to like, essentially sell him to do these like small runs. Uh -huh. and it's not, like we ordered 500 bags for the first run. Like mm -hmm. that's how many we ordered. Um, so yeah, that's nothing for them. Like they're, yeah. they're in like gonna tens grow. of thousands. It's yeah, we'll, we'll get there eventually. So yeah, it's kind of just building relationships along the way. And then as far as the design process goes, basically I was like, Michael, here's some bags that I, I think is cool. Like, here's kind of the vibe we're going for. I want it to be very sleek. I like some of these features. You know, like, mm -hmm. I basically gave him like a Pinterest board. And I was like, here's the list. Here's a Pinterest board. See what you can do. So he came back. There's, and I have stories about this on the Instagram too, if you want to go check it out. They're, okay. they're really old stories. You'll see like the sketches and like, you'll see the whole process. Anyways, so we basically got something in, fed it to the group, and we're like, which one do you like? And we just kept doing that mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Like, which one do you like? Which one do you like? Which one do you like? And and why? You know, like I wanted to know why you like that one maybe over this one. So it's a lot of questions, basically questioning everything that I possibly could just so we could learn, like, what are people thinking about in pickleball bags? Because yeah. I have an idea, but I'm, I'm one person. Right. And I think that's where a lot of companies fail, not just with bags, but a lot of products is they think that they their idea is the best idea and they'll just do it and it'll flop i don't listen to feedback and and like i hope manufacturers are watching this video because <laughs> i've watched your bag reviews on youtube not not yours but like other bag reviews and like if any of these companies just watch some of these reviews and took some of the feedback that that one person is giving you or these five people your bag would be better overnight. Like they just, they're not listening. And yeah. th that's when I really understood. I was like, okay, we have a really good opportunity because nobody's listening about their bag products in the pickleball space. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's how we're going to build this product. We just need to do it through feedback, strictly through feedback. So it's basically get a sketch in. Is there like a specific story that comes to mind that you change from someone's feedback? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tons. Give, give, us, um, one. give us one. Okay, this 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 ball pocket, it wasn't like this originally. It came in and it was actually just a slit, like basically like this. Uh -huh. And you you had to like reach your hand in there, and it was like really weird. Like it was working, but not not right. You know, uh -huh. like it just it was one of those things where like yeah, it could work, but it's not fun to use. And I took it to a group of people. We looked at the bag. They were shoving their hands in it, and they're like, "Well, why don't you just like." make like a big ball opening and like 
like a way that it could like open up or down, like a flap or something. And I'm like, yes, that's it. Like, there you go. Like, I, I can't believe I didn't think about that. But like, just getting those, yeah. getting it into like people's hands and like online and like, way. that's why I make so many videos showing it because somebody's gonna see something that I'm not and they're gonna point it out and like, give you're, me the feedback, you know? You're so good about asking for feedback yeah. and being open to it. Like yeah. In every video you do, you, you're always saying, let me know, let me know, let me yeah. know. Let me know. This. And do people respond? Are they giving it to you? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I ask for it too. Yeah, it's so you know? good. Like, and honestly, it, it's a win-win situation because it makes my product, my product, you know, the community bag product better for the next person. And... It makes it just makes my product better to yeah. sell. You know, so 100%. it's like I can't, you can't lose by just listening and getting feedback, good yeah. or bad. And like doing that now is so important because, to your point, like people get these bags out, they get the reviews, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, I wish this was different." Mm -hmm. Like, there's it's hard to change once you get to that level. Like, you can always change little things here and there and mm -hmm. iterate, but yeah, it's difficult and at that point. Like, this is the time to to get the big stuff. It is. It is, and like that's why it's taken so long. Is I told you this earlier, like, I'm sure other companies would have been happy with V1, you know, probably. like, because it looked cool. I probably would you still know? be happy right? with V1. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, like, I don't know. It's just, I, like, we have this saying, like, between me and my partners, like, if something is worth doing, it's worth doing well. And I, I had a lot of regrets with my past company. It was a really cool product, but my, my standard was lower. My tolerance for quality was lower mm -hmm. and I've changed and, and grown so much and I've raised my standards and like I'm a big like personal excellence guy like always chasing the next best version of myself and I really hope that shows in this product because it's like at some point we just have to release it which is this bag <laughs> right but like it's always going to keep getting a little this bit bag better with, with the zippers with this, the yeah zippers. yeah the, the next bag is going to have the coated zipper exactly right and like there's even like very very small things we're changing from this to what they'll actually be making. But I'm like, it just has to be so good. Like our whole philosophy is build products so good that they're worth telling your friends about. That's it. Like how many- And, and it's happening like right yeah. now. Like I see the discussions, I see it pop up in stories. Yeah. Like people are like in a lot of online forums, even like I think I saw it even in, in like, it was like a paddle review forum where someone brought up your bag and mm -hmm. like it's, people are talking about it. That's organic. People yeah. are, because it, it's worth talking it. about. They see it. Yeah, like, it's, it's worth it's talking about. It is so, so obvious. That, like those little like conversations coming in organically, it's huge. Is an absolute win for me because I'm. It's basically validating. Hey, you guys built something so good that people want to talk about it, and hopefully they talk about it in a good way. But I'm okay with them totally giving it to me straight. Yeah. If they hate something about it, like tell me. And I, <laughs> and I think in the pickable industry right now there's not enough of that that goes on is like giving feedback to the company and just being honest with them i give it to them every day you give you're <laughs> yeah and but like that's that's why people like you is because you're real like you'll give them real feedback right but i'm saying like on a mass scale no, it, yeah. the standard of quality in gear all pretty much across the board i would say is very low like I hope that people can model what we do and build products with strictly through feedback because it's a win-win. Like you're going to be building a better product for you. Hopefully you can make more money as a business and, and do well and outcompete your competitors, but also just gives a better product to the industry yeah. and the, the consumers as well. So yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that's kind of our, our mindset behind like building products is just we want them so good that we hope you talk about them and yeah it's, sell it's happening friends. it's going to keep happening so do you see this as being like your company Whoop. for uh for a bit you're going to stick with this oh yeah yeah um we're looking at like five-year plans okay minimum so and you're already working on a sling yeah we're uh, working what, on a sling what's your vision for the future of kitchen yeah so um we're gonna try to address different players so basically, this is your serious player bag. They have multiple paddles. This, this, is, this is your braid. They're spent. Yeah, this is the this is the champion product, right? Like this is our this is our champion, but it's it's not for everyone. And like I said earlier, I'm not trying to build this product for everyone. We can build other products that fit a different yeah. need, and the sling is going to do that. 
So this bag is on the, the side of the spectrum of very serious player. They got multiple paddles. They like, you know, the best of the best, the baddest, the biggest, whatever that mindset is. Yeah. And then the sling is like very minimal. It's like your, I just need my paddle and a couple balls and like some stuff from my keys, right? And maybe mm -hmm. your water bottle, right? So we're, we'll come out with products that cater to a type of player um, and not necessarily like a certain price point. Like <laughs> we had so many opportunities to cut costs with this, but if we do that, it reflects in the customer experience and, and product quality and longevity. So it, we're not really trying to hit price points or anything right, like that. It's... Like we're going to build it to the best of our ability to make it the best possible product we can. And that's just the product. Whatever the price is, is the price. Like right. I said, like these things are expensive to make, but it's it's for a specific player. Yeah, I know. I love that. And there, there's definitely a market for that. Like I, I feel like bags have been very much mass produced, get them to your hands cheap. Like no one's really done what you've done. Yeah. And there's not too many people capable of being able to do this. Like mm -hmm. your relationships, the people you found, like it's really it was a cool story. Like I... I couldn't go make this even if I wanted to. Like, I have a couple of products that I sell on Amazon that I went and you know made small tweaks and things. But like, yeah. those are just so those are such small scale. Mm -hmm. Like, it's nothing like this. Yeah, and, and I think we were talking about this earlier. Is like the the reason why the quality is low, the the standard is low, is because the barrier to entry is non-existent. Any anyone watching this video right now could literally start a paddle brand I, i've done it like I, I i'm one of those people right like I, I like to say we were early on and like had a cool thing going but like there's no barrier to entry you know so it's it's just like everyone's just going to try to sell as many things as possible and honestly i'm okay with that because we're just doing bags it's basically like our, our mindset with just doing bags is a hundred percent of our focus goes on bags that's the only thing we do mm -hmm. we want to be known for bags and there's no way that other companies can compete with somebody putting a hundred percent of attention and energy into one product when that company has a hundred different SKUs. yeah you just can't you cannot put your you can't put a hundred percent energy and effort into a hundred different different SKUs. you know yeah so that's kind of our mindset like i hope that companies keep launching bags because I know that's just another one of their products, you know? I'm like, they didn't they didn't put time and energy yeah, into it. And I like, I'm gonna kick your butt. I'm here to compete. I don't feel like you really have a competitor mm. for what you're going for. Not yet. Not yet. And Not yet. It, but I, I it, hope we do because it's gonna give better products to everybody. Yeah. I, I mean it'll come eventually, but like yeah. you've you found a space that no one no one's uh, gone after yet. Yeah, and uh, it's cool. Yeah, and I was telling you this story earlier. Um, right when we where right, right when I started playing pickleball, I asked my friends. I was like, because I was fresh off the backpacks, right? I was like, guys, who's making the cool bags? Like, <laughs> pickleball is cool. The paddles are a unique size. You play with the balls. Like, there's very specific things right. that I was like, there has to be like a really cool pickleball bag. You know, that was four years ago. So basically, <laughs> I've been thinking about this idea for four years. I've just been too busy and putting my energy in other places until this time last year. And I, I went to my partner, Topher, and I was like, dude, we have to do it. Like, I don't think anyone's going to do it at this point. Maybe further down the road, but up to this point, nobody's done it. And pickleball is hot and booming right now, but there's no bag. Like, yeah. let's be the bag brand. Let's, yeah. let's go I for mean, it. You guys did it right. I mean, there's a lot of elements of pickleball products and brands that are that are commoditized to a mm -hmm. certain point. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to differentiate yourself unless you go do what you did. You put in the investment, you put in yeah. the time, and it's yeah. that's a high barrier to entry. It is. And so it it's is. you're not going to see as many people do what you did yeah. just because of what it takes. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to to do the other stuff. And so no, I uh, I think you guys did it. Yeah. And uh, I was. I had high hopes for this thing coming in. I was like, I want this to be good because yeah, it yeah. looks cool. Were you a little bit nervous? And it was. Yeah. It, lit, it lived I'm up. really excited to, to, to keep messing with this week. Yeah. And I'm uh, going gonna, gonna to get one as, as soon as they come out. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a special print for you. I'm trying to like, you know how we're doing that bread and butter collab? Yeah. We're not going to do that a lot. I just really like Doug and what they do. Yeah, they're like, great. He's just a real, real person. And yeah. like the very first phone call I had, he literally sent me a message on our chat and was like asking these questions. And initially I was like, no, like 
I don't know who you are. No, we don't do it. And then he, he's like, hey, what's your phone number? I want to just like call you real quick. I had no idea who it was. And we had a conversation and it was a really cool conversation. Like, I want to work with people like that, you know, who like yeah, have a high standard and like just a real person. And I think Pickleball needs more of that. Yeah, they, they have a pretty sick collab. So like it has a different inside that's fun that kind of fits their branding. Yep. And then I think this is kind of co logo Yeah, it's co-logoed here, co-logoed here. But everything's very subtle, which is another thing I like. Like it's not like YOLO's like YOLO or something. Yeah. Like I like that it's subtle. Like this is a bag I could take to work, mm -hmm. put my laptop in there, not and people wouldn't know I play pickleball. Yes. And yes. I I like that. Yeah. Not that I'm ashamed to be a pickleballer, but like you don't want to be a billboard. You don't want to be a billboard. And yeah. so I like that it's subtle, it's sleek, it feels good, it makes you feel confident. And I can I can travel with this. You like it's you can yeah. use it for more than just pickleball. You I really can. I I do. I know a lot of people will play pickleball on the road where they go. Like they travel and they can't get a week without some games. And so they yeah. always play where they go. Mm -hmm. And uh this is like perfect for that. It yeah. looks like there's just I feel like there's applications for it yeah. outside of pickball, even if you want. But like, it combines those two worlds where I take this to work, I pull up my computer stuff, and then uh, then I hit the courts after work. Yeah. And I don't have to feel awkward about having this yeah. massive bag yeah. or, or something that's overbranded. Yeah, you know? we've already gotten a lot of feedback on that. Like People plan to make this their work bag so that their pickleball stuff is always ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Without knowing it's your pickleball stuff. Yeah. Not that people, like, Not people that like talking about pickleball, but like... I don't know if you're in a professional setting and like you yeah. don't want a freaking giant yeah. orange <laughs> bag with low, you know what I'm saying? No, exactly. Like, so I'm, I'm super excited to get this into people's hands and just like see how they live with it. It really is a lifestyle bag. Yeah. It's got the lifestyle yeah. element to it that a lot of bags don't have. Yeah. Well, this is cool, man. I'm very excited for you. Uh, I'll obviously be keep following along. I, I plan on start using this bag. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll be talking about it. So really excited for you, happy for you. This was a Thank long you. time in the works. Yeah, it and was. And it's here. It is here. It's here. So uh, just to refresh, so launch is March. Uh, April. April. Sorry. Late April. Late April, uh, but you can pre-order now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have all the links and stuff in the description, so go check it out, look into it, follow them on Instagram. Uh, you're posting several times a week. It's, it's Yeah, it's, it's just very real stuff. I'm not like... You know, it's just you're just, you're grub. Yeah, we're 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 us. You know, if you like it, great. But like, that's just kind of what we want to do with the brand is just very be very approachable and like yeah, no, be us. You know, I don't I don't want to try to sell people. Like, I'll show them the bag, but like, I'm not gonna be that guy that's like buy oh, stuff. Man, here's a link. I, here's a link. Like, bye bye bye. I'm not a salesy at all, yeah. and so I, yeah. I everything I approach. It is very much that way where I just you know put out the best quality stuff and kind of let people yeah. figure it out. Well, that's why people love you, man. And uh, so, sometimes I think it hurts me because yeah. I'm, I'm not super salesy, but it's just not my MO. And, yeah. and uh, so we would definitely align there. Yeah, and, I love but it. this thing, this thing stands out. Like you said, conversations are happening yeah. and uh, I'm, uh, I'm really excited uh, to get this out there for, like, I'm excited for you. Like this yeah. is so cool. It, it is yeah. so fun to see some Thank originality, you. something uh, really unique. And we just see so many copycats. And so this is, this is refreshing. Yeah. I can't wait to see copycats of this. Yeah, yeah that, that's not <laughs> it's coming. coming. It's coming. I don't know when, but nah. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds difficult. I can't go on Alibaba and you find this. You can't. No, you can't. This is one of uh, three in the world right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, good deal, man. Congratulations. Cool. And uh, yeah, go follow along. Thank you.